and welcome to another in the ARM What Is program series. In each episode, we dive into a tech topic to give you insight and perspective into some of today's hottest design trends. I'm Brian Fuller, Editor-in-Chief at ARM, and today we're going to find out what is an FPGA. And to help us with that, I want to introduce Rob Aitken fellow and director of research with ARM. When he's not helping us understand what is an FPGA, Rob is leaving the house and tentatively trying restaurants and travel again. <laughs> so let's dive right in. Rob, what is an FPGA and what does FPGA stand for? Thanks, Brian. FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. So a gate array is an array of lookup tables which are able to implement any logic function. And field programmable means that they are able to be programmed by a user in the field. So why would a design team choose an FPGA versus, say, an ASIC or a standard off-the-shelf chip? Another good question. So FPGAs initially were just that logic fabric, but they've expanded over time to include processors, uh, CERTES, like PCI, memories, and so forth. and they form it, they're, they're an easy path from a software concept to a piece of hardware. You're able to take your algorithm and convert it relatively quickly into a, a piece of hardware that actually does something. So the speed component is clearly important. How quickly can you get an idea implemented? There's also the, the flexibility. If you're not quite sure what your design is trying to do, or if you're building a prototype, an FPGA is often a good place to go because you can change your mind and redo it in a few hours versus a few months for an ASIC. More broadly, there's a cost trade-off as well. So with ASICs, there's a high startup cost and then a low unit volume cost. For FPGAs, there's a low startup cost and, and then a higher unit volume. So for certain lower volume levels, an FPGA is more cost efficient than an ASIC. So what are some of the other design trade-offs normally associated with FPGAs versus other approaches? The, there are a couple of trade-offs that are important. So there's a, there's a cost performance power trade-off inherent in choosing precisely which FPGA you want. And there's an entire range of them from very small and older generations to things that are built in the absolute latest generation of CMOS. And at some level, it's a question of which one will fit your design. So your design is going to take a certain amount of space and figuring out which FPGA has the capacity to hold it as part of the choice. There's, in addition to that, there's a, sometimes a reliability qualification part that's important as well, where a particular FPGA may have been qualified for a particular use. This is often true in aerospace, for example, and reusing that one is, is an easier option than choosing a new one and having to go through that qualification process all over again. So, Rob, you mentioned aerospace. Are there other applications that are considered FPGA sweet spots and why? Yeah, there definitely are. There the sweet spot applications tend to have some commonality. So they, they typically have lowish volume where we mean thousands to, you know, maybe tens of thousands versus the, the millions or billions that you might see with an ASIC. They also tend to be high complexity problems where you're not entirely sure how to implement it in software, or you might want to change it in order to get the performance you need, et cetera. And there's some sort of flexibility associated with that. So some typical places where those occur are places like telecom, where you have software-defined networking, or you have radio standards that you want to be able to augment or update over time. Another interesting one is emulation, where as part of ASIC design, you actually might prototype your ASIC on an FPGA or multiple FPGAs, and then run through some potential designs until you settle on one that you like. And finally, there's a data center, which encompasses several of those, where you might actually want to have a fabric of FPGAs available for use by data center customers, or alternately, you may have some specific machine learning algorithm or similar that you want to be able to accelerate at your data center and 
you may want to change that again next week. So having an FPGA is a better answer in that circumstance than an ASIC. So th those are the sorts of places where we typically see FPGAs being used. Well, thank you, Rob. I think we know a lot more about FPGAs now than we did just a few minutes ago. Now, check out all our other What Is episodes here and be sure to subscribe to this channel because we'll be adding more as the year progresses. Thanks for listening. Thank you.